Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and following the signing into law of the amended Electoral Act by President Muhammad Buhari. Nigeria's Electoral Empire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, this week released the timetable and schedule of activities for Nigeria's 2023 general election and also published the notice of election as required by law. However, there are indications that individuals and groups hoping to float new political parties may have to sit the elections out as the Independent National Electoral Commission has closed the window for fresh registrations. As it stands, only the currently registered 18 political parties will be participating in the 2023 polls. The INEC National Commissioner and Chairman of the Information and Voter Education Committee, Fesses Okoye, said the Commission won't accept or process any new application for registration of political parties for the 2023 election. Or does this mean a spanner in the works of proponents of a third force to challenge Nigeria's two biggest political parties, the ruling All Progressives Congress and the opposition People's Democratic Party? To help us answer this and other questions, we'd like to welcome on the breakfast uh, Ezekiel Nyaituk, who is a public affairs analyst. Uh, Mr. Nyaituk, thank you very much for your time. All right. Uh, uh, um, Ezekiel Nyaituk, please check your audio. We cannot hear you, so you probably may have to um, unmute. Um, apologies for that. It happens with Zumba. Thank you very much. Uh yeah, I always feel um, privileged to be on Plus TV. I, I'm always very happy when I'm on Plus TV. I don't know why, but right. I just feel good. Can we call you Obong, Obong Ezekiel Nyaituk? Is, is that out? No, <laughs> I am Otwe Kong. Otwe Kong Otwe is Kong. actually about the highest, highest title. Yes, it's like yes. Ariel Naka Kampo, yes. like the general. Fantastic. All right, all right, <laughs> interesting. So, if anyone comes to area, they should be careful because you might uh, they might have to deal with you. Um, um so, so your, your thoughts are on this this information coming, um, as far as uh, the 2023 elections are concerned, um, is this is this the end of any possible third force, at least for 2023? No, uh, as a matter of fact, it is definitely not. Um, I am one of the um, one of the forefront of the third force and I've been a national chairman of a party before so I understand very well it seems I am I hope I'm being heard yes you are okay good so I, I want to tell people from the beginning we knew that INEC will not register any new political party so we don't need a new political party what you need is one two three existing parties agreeing to come and work together and within that context any party can say i want to change my name i want to change my logo i want to change my manifesto the person is already in the house and INEC can affect those changes anytime any day within a certain time limit where before the ballots are, are printed so it does not in any way foreclose um, the alignment that will form the third force, which is actually what is happening. And I can tell Nigeria for free that we are going to have on the third force basket one, two, three strong candidates that are going to be driving their parties. And when you go towards maybe September or thereabout, they are going to come together and form that third force. Now, the vehicle that they are going to use is still left the way we are going to decide in front. But what I can tell Nigerians for free is that they are going to have a credible option that will be referred to as the third force on the ballot. So, so how can this thing be? I mean, these are the question. I mean, this is a question oh, that... No, it, you... it's easy. It's not a question. It's not, no, let me not say it's not a question. It's the easiest thing to do. What that means is that when the one, two, three strong parties decide that this is the person they want to build, they have a choice to adopt one platform, say ADC, for instance. Or they can say, okay, ADC, we take you, but we want to change the logo, or we want to change the slogan, 
or we want to even change the name completely, now all they need to do is give INEC the information, which is a resolution of the, 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 at, at the Congress of, of the party, that we will change our logo, we'll change our name, we'll change whatever status we want to change, and we want to henceforth be known by this. INEC will withdraw the former certificate and give them a new certificate. For instance, when I was the national chairman of Young Democratic Party, we had um, 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 a tractor as our logo. We wrote INEC that we didn't want to have a tractor, we wanted to have a light bulb because this was like a new generation kind of thing. And light, you know, bulb, it signifies ideas and creativity. And INEC obliged. So that is not registering a new party. That is simply a change of the logo or the name. So it's an internal affair with INEC that, that has nothing to do with registering a new party. That is allowed anytime, any day, maybe, maybe within a period before the ballots are printed. Because the moment INEC goes to print the ballot, um, I mean, for very reasonable reasons, you cannot um, do such changes. But for now, there is ample room up to maybe when names are submitted, probably up to October, up maybe November, maybe December. But from January, INEC is thinking in terms of the final names on the ballot. So that's not the best time for them to start thinking in terms of changing anything for a party. So it's an administrative procedure of, the, of, of INEC, which does not uh, pre mm. present any challenges whatsoever. All right. Uh, interesting, uh, Otwe Kong. It's, um, it, it sounds easy from what you're saying, um, uh, straightforward that you know political party can be volunteered at, at its uh, as as a that a political party can be can offer itself as a third force party for people to just come and take over. Uh, we know the legacy members of the All Progressives Congress. Uh, only God knows where all of them are right now. Uh, I, I don't know if a party, an already existing party, will want itself to be taken over simply because of the idea of a third force. And these parties have their rules. They have their. Um, their manifesto, they have their ideology, if, they, if it exists. They also have their logo. Um, for instance, uh, Labour Party had offered itself but said it would never uh, change its logo or never mention any other party. They've been one of the stronger parties along with ABGA um, in, in Nigeria and then maybe the SWAL CPC. Um, so do you think it's going to be easy for any of these parties, even ADC, that seems to be making some noise and uh, attracting some, some, some good names, do you think they, any of them will say, oh, we, we will give ourselves up? I mean, will it be that easy and that straightforward? I'll tell you two things. Number one is that I have been at a stage, I was actually the chairman of the merger committee. So... At another stage, a later stage, because it's been evolving at different levels, okay? At a bigger stage, the, 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 the chairman of SDP was the chairman. Somewhere along the line, probably one of the last phases, the chairman of ADC was the chairman. So these chairmen are already talking. And when a party says, we will never, uh, please don't take that party seriously, Politics is a game of interest that has no fixed nevers. Even the Democratic Party in, 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 in the US, something might happen, a, a crop of young people might come up and say, well, for 200 years you've done it this way, it is our time, we want to add this. And they probably bring a new dynamics that has to do with maybe the IT and they add something to it. So parties, are not cast in stone. It is the ideologies of the parties that drive which way it goes. Then secondly, I, I want to say that, you know, when you talk in terms of which is the big party, you know, we can, you know, we can say a lot of things, but I want to give you a fact. The fact is that in 2019, which is the latest polls that we had, APC came first. PDP came second. And please do your check. Guess the party that came third. ADC. That's the party that came third. I don't know if that's surprising to you, 
But you know, I will not come and say something that. No, uh, of course, the fact the facts are, are, are there. So yes, mm. but, 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 yes, but, but uh, secondly, uh, yes, okay, secondly, okay, secondly, of all the aspirants that are coming out, quality aspirants, they are either in PDP, which are largely speculative, or they are in APC, or they are in ADC. That's also a fact that you can attest to as at today. So They're either in APC, PDP, or ADC. Why is that so? Thirdly, not long ago, the youth of Nigeria decided to look for the youth-friendly party they want to get into. These are also facts you can verify. And guess what? ADC won with a, a humongous margin a wide margin. The youth say, for instance, ADC tells the youth, we give 35% appointment as a party policy to the youth. We give 35% appointment as a party policy to the women. And then we cut the fees, or you know, uh, you, want to, you want to buy forms, by 50% for all the youth. So they've shown themselves and they even created the fourth, you know, Nigeria has six geopolitical zones. ADC has seven, which is the okay, so diaspora. Ezekiel Yaito, uh, let's begin to look at this first. Of course, of course we know that, you know, INEC, uh, with the electoral bill, INEC is acting in accordance uh, because you're not expected to register, you know, political parties ahead of the 2023 elections. But like you have rightly mentioned, some of those parties that constantly dominate the political scene. We know of two dominant parties. You have mentioned a few, and this might probably would have one or two structures in different states in the country. Don't you think that we might we should be moving towards having a two-party system uh, rather than have 18 political parties, you know, on the ballot shit? It saves us all of the energies and, you know, um, money, costs, and all of that. Some people have argued that uh, this is a time where we should be moving towards having a two-party system rather than waste our resources and multi-party system. Because if you look at it, some of these parties, political parties, do not even have the structure, uh, as it were, across the entire uh, states of the Federation. You know, over the let me, let me blow your mind a little bit. Over the weekend, there was, you know, the by-elections. In one of the states, a guy who was popular with the people went for APC ticket. He was denied, flatly denied, and they gave it to who they wanted to give it to. The guy died in it, moved over to PRP. And guess what? He won the election. He moved over to PRP, and he won the election. You know, the things that we look at as structures and systems, we get it wrong. The structures and systems are the people. For instance, if Bola Ahmed Tinubu moves over to an unknown party, overnight that party becomes a relevant party in the Southwest, overnight. If a man like Kwan Kwaso moves into any party that you've never heard NTD, okay, overnight that party has structures all over. So the concept of structure has to be seen not within the context of the, you know, already existing two main parties. How do you explain that cross river state that was PDP? Just by one man crossing over to APC, they win elections. Just by one man. How do you explain the fact that a man like him in a Edo state, you know, who was a peace, he moves over to PDP and he wins the election. So the concept of structure has to be reassessed, reappraised, and re-understood within the context of the people. But, but as, as it can, yeah, I took, you can also take out the fact Let that... Me that Let me just land on this. This pet force, you say they don't have structure. All we need is one, two, three good people. Because in APC, they are good people. In PDP, they are good people. Is these people to say enough is enough? Let's realign our PDP, our APC. They come together overnight. That party becomes a strong party with structures right down to the words. 
Interesting, Ezekiel Yechuk. Um, just a quick one from you, a quick one. Are you saying that there are certain political parties that are meeting to merge? Just a quick one. Yes oh, or yes, no? yes. All right. I can All right. say that with every sense of responsibility. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank but you let me much. just add the last we, we're, thing. We're out of time, sir. Apologies. Apologies. I apologize. Please, please. Thank you very much, Ezekiel Yechuk. We'll have you again. Um, uh, here is a public affairs analyst and an Otuekong. Messi can give you the explanation of that. I can, but I would for now. Um, it's been a thrill having you on the breakfast uh, today right here on Plus Thanks TV for Africa. Having you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, amazing one. Uh, that's so much that we can take with definite return tomorrow. The time is 7 to 9 o'clock. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook. Twitter and Instagram and do subscribe to our YouTube channel as at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Tuesday. And I'm Kofi Patel. See you tomorrow.